you're more susceptible to falling for agents sales tactics and campaigns to try and get you in and, and you're just a statistic on their front because they know that you will never have that budget to get to purchasing this property but they want you involved in the process to create that additional level of uh you know buy demand and then they can talk about you as a potential buyer to other buyers with a higher budget level that oh there's another offer coming in and that's conditioning somebody else and you're just a statistic that's going to fall prey and the issue around that from a cost perspective is if you think you have a chance and you ask this agent you know do i have a chance you know what what kind of figure buys this property and if it's um all that makes sense to you to go in you're going to be spending money on a contract review with your solicitor and you're going to be spending money on a building and pest report so whilst they're not big expenses on average in Australia, people miss out on five to six properties before they jump in um, to, I guess, sometimes emotionally overpaying. So the whole process, if you're doing that, it might be a 1000 bucks each property. If you get a contract review and you get a building pest report, you do that five times, you know, there's five grand just gone down the drain. Yeah, that's a big point. So the average of like five to six properties they look at or seriously look at before they actually find the right one. You mentioned before, like, so obviously that's the first point of like how it can cost you money out of the three, the three reasons. But before, like you mentioned this first point here, you mentioned trying to get people aligned with, you know, does this property even exist? And I guess that's the most important thing, right? Is this, this is going to help you prevent you from having to go through these three reasons why people end up you know suffering from a huge opportunity cost up to a hundred thousand dollars because they haven't really educated themselves in the market which is only you can only do that in the market for what is available uh and this is the this is the thing where people may listen to other you know media sources like youtube videos podcasts read books that may be 10 years old or follow strategies that don't that can exist but don't produce fruitful results based on a book years and years and years ago and have this ideology of a property that they need to purchase that's going to get them to their goals, whereas the market's ever-evolving. So that, so I guess it's important for people to be at least elastic and flexible to market changes to be able to get into the market and move with it versus like try and make the market be what they want and sit on the outside of it until they realize there's a lot of opportunity costs gone. Absolutely. And that's, uh, I guess we touched on this a few times throughout in different episodes. So if you, you know, go back and listen to those first sort of 30 foundational episodes we talk about, but uh, a big part of that is you've got to understand the market you're buying into. And sure, you might have seen a property that sold three months ago for, that was at the top end of your budget, hypothetically a million dollars. But if that area has grown, you know, in 5% in that three months, you know, that million dollars is now a million and 50 round numbers. I love it. But your budget, therefore, is just no longer viable. And then you're, I'm seeing people and we, we have clients, we have these conversations with them. That's why it's sort of top of mind at the moment. Mm. And you know, in their head, like, I'm not a pushy person. It's their money. It's their choice all for that. But the areas that were showing those really good signs of growth, they're now no longer able to purchase into. So we're having these harder conversations three months later and um, you know, just trying to educate them that, hey, unfortunately, because we didn't have that, you know, you, you, or was it my fault being the trusted advisor or the client's fault, you know, not wanting to spend the money? I'm not sure, but it's just one of those things where I was like, well, that property three months ago was a, was a really good deal. You know, we missed out on it by 10 grand. You know, this is kind of why I say that in a growth market, you pay that extra 10 grand because in three months' time, that's going to be worth another 30 grand more. So it's kind of just trying to educate people and help people understand that process. But that it, it comes from the setup too. And mm. knowing what your budget is and going through and filtering the sold section in the last month or three months to see would you, would you have purchased these properties um, in these target areas and seeing what they sold for and then looking at the growth data from that front 
is the, the perfect way just to check in and make sure that, hey, yeah, actually, you're not looking for a unicorn uh, because unicorns come around once every six, 12 months. Um, and that's at best, right? And then mm. the issue that people do find if they are these unicorn buyers is then they want to bargain. You know, they want to buy an under market value. And it's like, well, this probably comes around once every six, 12 months. There's probably everyone that's in the market at that point in time just puts their eyes onto that property type. It might be an inexperienced agent. I don't know its value or a seller who doesn't know its value. Um, and that's where speed comes in, in the confidence of knowing one, what it's worth and two, how to negotiate as hard as possible. And that's the skill set of the buyer's agent that you should be working with to help go down that path with you. But yeah, I thought it's, yeah. um, that would be, that's the, that's the first key point that we've, a lot of people come to us too late in that first point of, they want to go it alone, all power to you, go for it. But it's the, they've missed out. They've spent that $5,000 on multiple contract reviews, building a pest reports. They're sick of it. That's that pain point, which we talk about a lot, which is I don't want people to get to that stage because that's when you throw the extra $50,000 on the table just to, you know, get it over and done with and move on to the next stage in your life because you're sick of missing. You're sick of paying for these, you know, fees. And yeah, that's sort yeah. of like obviously why I'm passionate about you know, the value that buyers agents can provide in this transaction. Yeah, spot on. I, I, I'm with you there. And I'm, I'm a big believer in you get what you pay for. And there are, unfortunately, we, the mindset of being cheap can cost you have a cheap experience and a cheap life and a cheap investment. And like, I don't think a cheap investment is typically the way to go. Uh, when we're buying businesses and when I'm particular to buy businesses, you either buy something that is like going sideways in terms of growth, going down or going up. I tell people to not buy things that are going down. Sideways is okay. But if you buy something that's going up in value, you can spend that extra little bit of money to get into the market to purchase that with confidence it's going up. Obviously, you don't want it to be at the very peak of the market cycle in the area, and that's why you use buyer's agent and good data and stuff like that. But if you'll just get halfway through or just at the start, it's worth paying that extra because you have confidence that market and that property is growing in that market. And, yeah, I wanted to bring it back to that because, like, being cheap can cost you in the long run. 